Some of this stuff I've been working on a number of years, like there's a song called Change Has Come To Me that I've had for 20 years, but never finished it. And a few years ago, I finished the lyrics. And then, I, and then but you end up adding, adding a middle eight, or you, know, you end up spiffing it up or whatever, but some of the original ideas can be from a long time ago. However, there are a handful of the songs on the new record that were brand new and actually got kind of written in the studio. Because once, once you start a project, you always have this finite idea about what you're going to do. Some of the stuff doesn't end up being as good as you think it is, and then there's all these hidden surprises that happen. But a lot of times, what doesn't work, you have to just, okay, that's not working, I gotta leave that and go to something else. And then also what happens is you'll get an idea for a song right in the middle of a recording, and it's contiguous with what you're doing, and then you wanna put that with it. That's kind of the way I work. But, you know, this record went a lot quicker than most of my records. It's just, um, I ended up spending two years on it, but we cut like 23 songs, and you know, and a lot of them I overdubbed and finished up. I ended up cutting like two records. This record is my attempt to step in the direction of becoming more open. That was a Strat with the DiMarzio HS2 pickup, which I've had that pickup for years. That's the one I used to have in this guitar called Virginia, but I switched it over to the 57 Strat. Yeah, it was just that, and uh, Tube driver, Echoplex, and a 100 watt Marshall. That was just an old Les Paul through an old Marshall, 100 watt Marshall. That's it. It's, oh yeah, there's a fuzz face on one of the leads. I kick in a fuzz face, but mainly it's just a straight, straight tone into the uh, bright channel. It's the same era of Marshall that that Clapton used on Fresh Cream. Same kind of guitar and everything. It's you know pretty much stealing Eric Clapton's Fresh Cream tone. <laughs> Until I hit the fuzz face, then it gets a little bit more more my thing. On the clean stuff, it was just a stereo course, a Strat into a couple of twins, and then the other thing is just a Strat into a tube driver and a Marshall. Actually, what that was, was it was one complete piece that I didn't write anything. I just sat down and the very first track, I just improvised, just whatever, just sat there, turned the machine on, just played. Once I did that, then I would go back and improvise to the improvise. And I just laid all these, it was all just make it up as you go along. And kind of the whole idea when I was doing that was just do whatever you want in the moment and just let happen and don't, don't have any preconceived ideas or anything. So I just kind of, it was like, you know, coloring, you know, and just do whatever you want. And, but the more overdubs I got on, the more it kind of started defining what the last overdub would be. So, I, you know, so very last overdubs when I started putting some melodies in, I had to notate that out just so it would fit all the improvisation I did. But it was one, you know, six or seven minute piece and then I just like faded in and faded out. I wrote that song for my dad. He passed away about um, six years ago, and it's kind of like this time about somebody's life, and it was it was a, a tribute to him. Showed me some pages from the book of your life. Sonny Landreth played on your book. Um, Steve Miller sang on uh, Texas, the blues piece. Jimmy Vaughn played on it, and Johnny Lang sang on uh, Austin. And uh, Malford Milligan uh, from Austin, great singer, sang on Brilliant Room. Yeah, it was fun having um, different musicians come in, and I had a guy from Nashville named Jason Eskridge came in and did uh, background vocals. He sings for Johnny Lang background, and, and he was cool because he came up with all these parts, and you, you get to see how when you you let go for a second, somebody takes the floor and they take it and they just take it somewhere else. And what? And then the, the imaging gets a little wider. It's kind of cool. I enjoyed that actually. It's fun. I think I want to do that some more. You can get kind of myopic, you know, if you just sit in your own box and do exactly what you had and you hold your fist real tight. And this kind of was busting out of that a little bit, making me realize that I want to bust out of that even more. Mm -hmm. 